Hello, I'm uh, Glenn Powell. It's perhaps, uh, thank you, wow. Um, didn't know that name mean anything in this room. That's, that's great. Um, are you guys having a good time tonight? Good, good, good. Uh, it's perhaps too frequently said that the eyes are the window to a person's soul. However, if you were to look into the eyes of John Huntley, today in room 160 of the MPTF long-term care facility, you'd see more than just a man's soul. You'd see his wife, you'd see his daughters, you'd see his hopes and his dreams. And in the reflection of those eyes, you'd see yourself. Because John is every single person in this room. We're all here today for the same reason. We all are bonded by our love of film and television and entertainment. But for John Huntley, that is no exaggeration to say that that love is what's keeping him alive. It started with a fawn finding her feet in the woods, a hunter's rifle, a loss of a mother. For John, Bambi was not only the first film he ever loved, it was also the first time he saw himself on the screen. John had been put up for adoption by his birth parents at the age of three, but that Disney classic found him when he most needed it. Just as Star Wars found a boy with a need of imagination, uh, Rocky found a boy with a need for tenacity. By the time John had discovered his birth parents had both died young, it was terms of endearment that was mirroring his life. Once again, movies had provided a home for his soul and the consistency of a surrogate parent who would never leave. Inspired by that love, John followed his dream of writing and directing and earned a master's degree of arts and cinema from USC. He went out into the workplace with the world of his feet. His first jobs out of college, he remembers working alongside Scott Stuber, Kevin Feige, John Wells. He was ready to make his Bambi, his Star Wars, his Rocky. Destined to be sitting among you all, enjoying the cocktails, hearing about another man's misfortune. And then it happened. Her name was Rebecca Parr. And in, like in so many of the movies that John had loved, our hero did not stand a chance. Their romance was cinematic. They fell in love across a ballroom dance floor. They danced the foxtrot at their wedding. They had two beautiful daughters, Livia and Rachel. But now the only films he would make were the home movies of his kids' birthday parties. He was living a new dream. Until one day, that dream fell apart. It began with his fingers, John's right hand having a hard time operating the computer mouse. Then it moved to his leg, a uh, drop foot, making it hard for him to walk. And he maintained a positive attitude. At first, anyone who knows John wouldn't expect nothing less, but on September 22nd, 2012, at USC Keck Medical Center, John Huntley was diagnosed with ALS a progressively debilitating neurological disease that affects the brain and spinal cord. In the blink of an eye, this husband and father of two had suddenly been given just a few years to live. He was 45 years old. Within months, John had to quit his job. He had to sell his home. He couldn't drive. The family dog even had to go because he knocked John over too many times. Dream was over. John was now in a free fall as his body began to shut down around him. John and his wife kept hoping they could find a nursing home to ease the discomfort. But unlike the movies, no one was going to help. John and his wife searched 20 nursing homes. No one would take John because of his ALS. There was no cavalry, there was no knight in shining armor, no superhero to the rescue. It said John and his family were left alone with a disease, nowhere to run. And then, through his wife's work at DreamWorks, John and Rebecca heard about the MPTF. And John's prayers were answered. As Rebecca's spouse, John was admissible to receive long-term care and become a resident at the Wasserman campus in Woodland Hills. Within weeks, the white walls of 160 were covered in family photos and USC banners. John was now safe and exactly where he belonged. MPTF had once again looked after their own. But for John and MPTF, this was just the beginning. As you know, ALS is an unforgiving, degenerative condition. Uh, and as John's disease progressed, 
everything around him began to shut down. His legs, his arms, even his speech. I mean, it's hard to imagine that um, when your body's shutting down, you're a prisoner of your own brain. Unable to speak, the world of TV and movies, the thing that John loved so long ago, found him once again. It came in the form of Channel 22, MPTF's own resident TV channel, a place where residents, professionals, and industry volunteers work side by side to create campus programming. It was here, Channel 22's on-campus facility, that John Huntley found his voice again. Despite his body's failing, one thing John's body remained in perfect working condition, his eyes. The same eyes that had watched Bambi, the same eyes that fell in love at first sight, were the eyes that would save him once again as the MPTF outfitted John with a technology known as eye gaze, an eye tracking apparatus that allows John to communicate through computer, giving him the freedom to connect with others, to be independent, to literally speak with his eyes, and more importantly, giving him the ability to create again, to make movies again. And at first, you know, John began editing original programming with the channel using eye gaze to literally edit and create scenes. And then he did two shows, he did three shows, he did four shows, two became four. And then it didn't become just a vocation, it didn't become a hobby, it became medicinal. John edited with his eyes through the night. He began to feel the thrill of creativity. And that creativity gave him meaning, gave him purpose. Before long, seeing the extraordinary difference in John's demeanor, Jen Clymer, the head of Channel 22, gave him a new challenge. Write your own film. It had been 48 years in the making. With a quarter inch twitch of his pupils, letter by letter, line by line, he wrote a script for a 25 minute short film. And with the help of his fellow residents, professionals, they shot it in six days. And then as the dailies glanced across those eyes, he edited his film scene by scene, frame by frame until it was complete. The MPTF campus has a state-of-the-art screening room made possible by the donations of the hardworking people here today. And the people there always joke that if you know, they never have to look at Rotten Tomatoes because they know if a new release is good, whether or not anyone's in the room still when the lights come on. <laughs> For the MPTF, every waking moment's a gift, so they don't really have time to, you know, sit through your crappy movies. And <laughs> I mean, if your movie's terrible, they're, uh, you know, they got better things to do. <laughs> but on July 11th, John Huntley screened his movie for the fellow residents, and when the lights came up, there wasn't an empty seat in that house. For John Huntley, this was his Star Wars. Back in 2012, John was told that he'd be gone in two years. It's now been six and a half years, and John is still here. He just celebrated his 50th birthday. Making movies has given John a new lease on life. He's a man truly filled with gratitude for the MPTF. And if you're lucky enough to see John's movie, you will see a window in a man's soul, the man who made it. Because John's film, entitled Matt and Maya, uh, it's a film about moving on from the death of a loved one. It's a film about goodbyes. John's not naive, he knows who he is, he knows he's not gonna outlive his wife and daughters. And if you Ask him what he thinks about the first film he ever made. His answer is simple. Bambi still holds water. He didn't ask for his mom to die. He didn't ask for the force to burn down. He didn't ask for ALS. But you go on and you make the most of it. It's John Huntley.
you look into his eyes today, you're going to see that Fawn still finding its feet. You're going to see his dreams for the MPTF and everything it's done for him. You're also going to see one of the strongest men you've ever met. You'll see a father, you're going to see a husband with eyes still as wide as the world, a filmmaker like any of us looking to the future. Thank you, John. MPTF has worked with industry members with ALS in the past. Uh, even now, they're helping Stacy Teitel. She's in the palliative care program. And the relief that she and her husband have had with the MPTF support has made it so they can both sleep comfortably again. John, however, is the first person with ALS that has become a member of the retirement community. The level of intense and specific care that he required sparked a heated debate about whether the MPTF was ready to help. Ultimately, the decision was easy. John has been a great addition to the Wasserman campus, has inspired so many. Tonight, we have a gift to him from where it all began. USC put together some items, including a digital copy of their coffee table book and the history of the film school so that John can enjoy it whenever he wants on his computer. Thank you for letting us share your story, John. <laughs>